Hello. So in this video, I want to spend a bit of time talking about the common denominator that almost all behavioral issues raised to me by my clients have. There's a particular thing present in almost every one of those things. So the owner will say to me, the problem is he's got a separation anxiety, or they'll say he's aggressive towards other dogs, or he jumps up on people, or he steals food, or he resource guards. All of those things will have a common denominator which is actually the real problem. The things the owner described, the aggression, the anxiety, they're not really the problem, they're the symptom of the problem. And what almost every behavioral client tells me is that their dog has this symptom that they call the problem. From my perspective, the problem with virtually all of these dogs is that they can't control their own arousal levels. They become so over the top. They're like that champagne cork that bursts off the bottle and it goes, ah! And that's their problem. A symptom of the problem is the separation anxiety or the aggression or the resource guarding or whatever it is. They're the symptom. The problem is when you put the dog in this scenario, he gets so overstimulated that he can't control himself and then acts out. So if they say the problem is he dog to dog aggression, what happens is he sees another dog, which he could grit his teeth and just walk past. But no, he goes, rawr, rawr, rawr. well, that behavior isn't the problem. That's the symptom. The problem is when he saw that dog, he didn't have the skills to be able to swallow that down and go, do you know what? I'm going to trust in you and we'll just walk past this dog. He says, no, I don't care what you say. There's a dog over there. And off he goes. The dog who steals food off the counter. It's his lack of self-control. He knows he's not supposed to have it, but he goes, but I really want it. So he jumps up on the counter and he steals it. The dog who pulls on the lead, he's not trying to dominate you and lead the pack. He just says, you're too slow. I just need to get there quicker. So I have to pull you because you're too slow. He just doesn't have the self-control to be able to walk at your pace. So of course, if we misdiagnose the problem, we're probably gonna struggle to fix it. I get an awful lot of owners who'll say things like, I got a dog trainer in, and I told him that he's aggressive towards other dogs. So he said, right, we'll take him to the park. We'll bring out my dog and we'll see how he gets on. Well, of course the dog fails because he says, I can't cope with the dog on the street. When I come in the park, I'm so hyper stimulated. There's not a chance I'm going to be able to control it here. But always when I speak to that client, they'll give me a whole list of other scenarios that the dog doesn't control himself in. He jumps up on my visitors. I can't leave anything out. He'll steal it and chew it. Food, he'll nick it. He'll grab it off your plate if he can. And they will give me this whole list of things, even in their home, on really little things, the dog can't control himself. And I say, well, if you can't get him to leave a sandwich on the counter or a shoe on the floor, why do you think you're going to be able to get him to leave another dog that's barking at him from the other side of the street? It's just never going to happen. So always when I'm working with a client, I encourage the client to look at all of those issues indoors. All those little things that seem completely unconnected to his aggression towards other dogs when in fact they're super connected because if I can't get him to leave a shoe on the floor which is much less stimulating than another dog how am I going to get him to leave the other dog so I start with the shoe on the floor so with all of my clients we start off working at home we look at all of those issues and only then does the dog potentially have the tools to be able to deal with arousals when he's you know out in the park or out on the street where his arousal levels are so much higher now he has the tools to at least possibly be able to do that but if you don't start with all of those little things, if you're not looking at the diet that he's eating and whether or not that's giving him too much energy, if you don't look at his exercise regime and see if it's an owner who's constantly keeping him fit. So I've got squeaky toys and activity balls and I've got snuffle mats and licky mats and all these things that are designed to keep him stimulated all the time. So he has no ability to learn how to relax, to be able to calm down. Well, of course you're gonna end up with a dog who's overstimulated. So I look at all of those things the little issues, the big issues, and everyone in between. And we work at teaching the dog the self-control to be able to carry out these things that they want him to do. And if you don't do that, you're probably not going to get very far. Best of luck. I hope it works out for you.